Good morning. Is it the morning? It's actually the morning. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well. big stretch. Oh, good morning. How are we all doing? Welcome into twitch.tv forward slash plus. My name is Graham D. Hey, how are you doing? How's things, babe? Fantastic, Graham. <laughs> nice. Fantastic. Nice. Nice. Um, so, yeah, welcome in, people. Uh, if you don't know who we are, if you don't know what this is, let me give you let me give you some education. My name is Graham Day. This is the man that we call Bibi. We are Ice Cream Uploads, and in true ice creamy fashion, this is the scoop, the UK's number one video game podcast, if we do say so ourselves. We go live on Twitch each and every single weekday at 10 a.m.-ish. Yesterday, it was like like half four in the afternoon or something it felt like it, it, was, it was it was like pretty much 1 p.m ish or something 12 yeah. 30 1 p.m ish yesterday which is the latest that we've ever gone live with the scoop but we appreciate you all for joining us anyway even if we do go live a little bit ish on the 10 ish uh, we appreciate you all joining us in the chat so we are here for the next hour or so to bring you the biggest the best and the breaking stories and there goes my phone uh, nice from the world of video games let me mute that one there we go. So we go live on Twitch each every single weekday, 10 a.m. ish, for an hour or so, bring you the best, uh, biggest, best, and breaking stories in the world of video games. We will then give you our thoughts and impressions on those stories. We want your thoughts and impressions on those stories. And then after that, we'd like your thoughts and impressions on our thoughts and impressions. That's kind of how this whole thing works. So if you're in the chat with us live on Twitch, please do feel free to get involved. Not only do we go live on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads each and every single week at 10 a.m. ish, which I've said a few times now, but we also turn the live stream into a podcast, a video that goes on YouTube and an audio podcast that goes on iTunes and Spotify and SoundCloud and Google Play, lots of places where people watch and listen to this show on demand. It's been a lot of people that have watched and listened to the show on demand. Isn't that right, Bib? Uh, absolutely, Graham. Absolutely. I do believe it's like, was it, was it like, is it about eight people now? Nine people? Is it what? Oh, no, it was 105,000 people and counting have listened to this show on demand. A little bit more than eight or nine people. So thank you, everyone that does support us. We massively appreciate everyone. Be that people watching the stream. Be that people watching and listening on demand. Dropping subs, following the channel, dropping gifties, a little bit of a host, a raid. Whatever you guys do, we appreciate the support. We genuinely, genuinely do. So thank you very much, everyone that does continue to support the channel. And we will support you with the content. Today is the last day of the week. Well, it is, at least for the Scoop content. We bring you streams seven days a week, Monday to Sunday, and then again on the Monday and the, uh, to the Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you get the Scoop. On a Wednesday and a Thursday evening, you get evening streams. Some PUBG and some FIFA this week. Next week, who knows? Who knows? Probably more, knows? probably more of the same-ish. And then on a Saturday morning, you get some PUBG. On a Sunday morning, you will be getting rimmed by Bibi for your viewing pleasure. That's Skyrim, obviously, not what you guys are thinking. God damn. <laughs> honestly, honestly. Um, let me jump into the chat before we go anywhere first, though, just to just, just see who's here. Doctor's in. Yo, yo, yo. Hi, all. How are we all doing? Hey, oh, oh, let's jump in the big, big cam so we can see it. It's disappearing. Oh, yeah, look at all that rimming all over your screen. Yeah. So, yeah, do feel free to join us so, Sunday morning for some Skyrim adventures. Nice. 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 Uh, good nice, morning, nice. Viv. I'll read. Uh, the best intro I have ever seen in my life, says Doctor. You're goddamn right. Thank you very much, dude. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, we, we have some good... Good artistry, designery, video, jobby colour winners at the uh, Ice Cream yeah. Uploads team. So, so yeah, th they'd appreciate hearing that. Thank you very much. Taze Bad says, hi, how are we all? We're all good. How are you? Uh, good. Nietzsche dropping in with a, well, hello there. Do you know what? You need that as an emote, Nietzsche. You fall on need Obi-Wan, well, hello there. If uh, like, if you don't mm. have that as, as an emote on your channel, you're missing the trick, oh. my friend. Order. Um, Black and White Army says, uh, says Dr. Nietzsche, Nietzsche will have a... Uh, yep, yeah, there we go. We've got a knot like this. Um, good morning to all. We need a countdown on Baby Bib, says Taze Bad. That's a good point, actually. Um, mm -hmm. Although we can't have that yet, because whilst it's all right that Bibby's having a baby that will change his life forever, we also need a countdown... Because it's two weeks to the day until it's my birthday. I don't know if you guys knew that one, but let's, let's, get, let's, get, let's get the important things out of the way. Uh, two weeks to the day. So not next Friday, but the Friday after. 
it will be my birthday. I'm sure you guys didn't know that. I don't think it's been mentioned, but December the 3rd is my birthday. You guys probably haven't been aware, but but yeah, it is my birthday, December the 3rd. 3rd of December. December 3rd, that's Friday. The third day of December is my birthday, just in case you didn't know. Um, sorry, what time do you go live each day with the scoop? Not sure you've said it yet. Tony Amish. Tony Amish. Tony Amish. Uh, Bully, thank you very much for the lurk. Also, you dropping that lurk has let me know that the chatbot is dead because I had to restart my PC this morning. It will be live in just a few seconds, which does remind me to let you guys know that we have we have something monumental in the works. Yeah. Um, if anyone wants to type exclamation mark loot drop, I actually haven't updated it. So, so fuck. If, if Bibby wants to grab the link to the loot drop, <laughs> drop yeah. it in the chat. Um, you know, memento. <laughs> the loot drop. Oh, we have two. We have all of the chatbots working. Ah, look at the t- <laughs> look at the chatbot spam. Is is that the studio or is that your chatbot? That one. It might be yours from last night. Uh, actually, I'm fairly certain that the I turned the PC off yesterday. Or was in the office. It could be your chat. So that'll be interesting. From last I don't think mine's open. Cream. I don't know. I've only got it open once, mm. I think. Yeah, I've only got it open once. Oh, this is interesting. This is interesting. Um, so yes, anyway, this month's loot drop will have two prizes. Not just the one, but two. We will allow you to pick a game of your choice, within reason. Uh, plus, see this? See this beautiful hat? This is a curved peak blackout hat. If I click on Big Bib... Then you can see that is a flat peak blackout hat. You get to choose one of those if you win next month's loot drop. Uh, you get a game of your choice plus a hat of your choice from the Ice Cream Uploads merch den. How cool is that? How cool is that? As well as the loot drop, let me just remind you guys that exclamation mark insert coin. You can bag yourself some absolutely stunning insert coin merch. We will be sharing some pictures on social media today of our latest insert coin loot drop. We've had, uh, well, we've got bomber jackets, we've got pajamas, we've some nice t-shirts and stuff we will show you guys so do keep your eyes on our social medias we'll show you what goodies we have from insert coin today nice uh, Lotus, thank you very much no. for the host what a guy what a guy um let's just carry on going through the chat barrow greetings from the treadmill uh are you actually working out right now gee geez good effort lurking but can't chat i mean you absolutely can chat but it'll just be the letters yeah. will be all over the keyboard it'll be like hi good morning or something like that so yeah it's, just, it's, it's <laughs> fine you, you you concentrate on the workout we appreciate you being here though super Kelly one says there's only one ice cream uploads what ice cream uploads there's only one ice cream uploads walking along singing a song streaming in an ice cream wonderland there's only one. Okay, there's enough. Daniel's on the phone or something downstairs. I'll, I'll stop. It's okay. Um, super killer one with the It's Christmas! Still let Wes see you do that because Wes would absolutely lose his, lose his mind. I don't mind people celebrating Christmas from Canada now. That's good for me. That's fine. It's, yeah, it's fine. Um, but in my house, December 4th, because I don't know if I mentioned it, it's my birthday on December the 3rd. So, you know, we'll get mm. my birthday out of the way on December the 3rd, which is two weeks today, by the way, just to get you to know. Um, I only have space for one emote. I'm not in the upper echelons like you guys. We just got five more emote slots today, by the way. Twitch, I don't know if it's Twitch partners or Twitch affiliates or whatever, but we got an email last night from Twitch saying we've just been given five more emote slots, so we've already started working on that. We've we've mm-hmm. sent some briefs through to the designers, so subscribers, you will get even more emotes on our channel soon. Uh, sorry, I'm washing my hair on December the 3rd, says Thomas. God damn it. God damn it. BRB, Postman's here. Jersey time, baby. Oh, you love to see it. Do post pictures in the Discord each year. So for anyone that hasn't seen the Ice Cream Uploads merch, uh, we have a merch store on Gamers Apparel. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. It's it's okay. It's okay, merch. But it's, it's, it's cost-effective merch. It's merch that's not going to cost you an absolute fortune to get hold of. You want an Ice Cream Uploads eSports jersey? You don't have to spend 80, 90 quid, as you might if you were getting them from other eSports outlets. 25 quid, I think it is, is what the shirt, uh, the jersey costs. Anyway, um, Nietzsche has just ordered himself an Ice Cream Uploads eSports jersey. So that should be with him. He's answering the door, so he should have it now. So if you're in the Discord, look forward to yeah. the pictures. Nice. Thank you very much for the uh, the loot drop command, Viv. Appreciate it. Uh, and you too, Bully. What a guy, what a guy. Uh, sorry, I have to leave to get some curtains. <laughs> Perfect day. Enjoy. <laughs> Enjoy. Um, so PUBG 2 not available as a reward then. I mean, yes, we will get you PUBG 
Two. Isn't <laughs> T double O? Not T double. You, you get it? No, okay, okay. Isn't a curved peak just a flat peak that has been curved? Pretty much ish, ish, ish. Um, flat peaks are like curved peaks, except less cool and for nerds. <laughs> says Tito. Um, curved peaks are the way to go, says Lotus. Uh, Twitch affiliates get five straight away as of today. There you go. There you go, Nietzsche. You got five from today. So so, so get yourself like four different variations of well. Get well, hello, there, and then an Obi-Wan face. So people can just spam that. That's, that's your four spaces done now. That's all you need. Lotus says, still waiting for my jersey. I imagine you might get it pretty quickly because we had Bacon Chins go through um, on Monday and then his arrived, or was it Tuesday? His arrived yesterday. Um, and then yesterday, Nietzsche got his dispatch message and his has arrived today. So I imagine you'll get yours in the mm -hmm. next few days, which is which is what a, what a time to be alive. Uh, next year, message, what up, boys? Good morning. Good morning. It's still the morning. I had to double check then just to make sure it is the morning. It is the morning. Uh, Graham's dressed like he's about to help the guy with the ladder uh, next robbery. Hey, this is actually this is actually me dressed up pretty pretty smart. I will have you know. I will have you know. Yeah. I mean, apart from apart from the baseball cap, but this is a nice 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 woolen jumper. But other when when I'm in a small picture, it just looks like I've got like yeah, cat burglar sort of black hat, black top kind of thing. Yeah, I know. I've not even got pajama pants on. I have jeans on today. What, what is this? <laughs> Wow. Uh, anyway, how are we all doing? If anyone is in the chat and you haven't let us be known that you are here, then th that's absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with a lurk. We appreciate all you lurkers, but do feel free to get involved. Just, just, just to hey, you don't have to, but feel free, feel free. Um, anyway, Mister Bib, mm. you were on stream last night. I was on stream last night. How did that? Well, looks, but I was on stream last night. <laughs> how was Long FIFA Friday? Yeah, FIFA Frenzy was good. Um, I don't know what everyone's complaining about, about FIFA being a mess. Do you know what I mean? Like, Division 6, it's fine up here. I'm taking the piss out of people. Left, right and centre. Three, three, three matches in the divisions, three rage quits. Normal service has been resumed. A little bit more difficult when it got to the pro club scene. Um, I'm struggling because I haven't played it that much. My character isn't great. I'm quite character, it's not an RPG. My player isn't that great. At this moment in time, like because uh, I'm playing left wing, every time I pass the ball to the left wing when I'm playing uh, foot, Grealish is on the ball. My character, my my player is nowhere near as good as Grealish on the game. So I'm trying to do stuff that I would do with Grealish. It just doesn't come off. Um, so pro clubs was a bit of a slog for me yesterday. I'm not going to lie. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I, to, I'm more looking forward to the stream on Sunday. If if cards on the table, Sunday stream. I, it's going to be a banger. It is going to be a banger. Uh, and what are we streaming on Sunday, babe? Give us, give us, give us more information on that. And I'm absolutely 100% not updating the, the loot drop command as you talk. You, you, yeah, you talk. <laughs> what is this? Oh, the, yeah, oh, big the, the PS5 version of this. The PS5 version of this. Now, Shogun came into the chat yesterday and started giving me shit as he usually does. Again, he's my one true nemesis in this video game world. Everyone needs a nemesis. He is mine. Um, and I told him that I want nothing to do with him until he starts playing Skyrim. Um, so I'm trying to bait him into playing some ESO because I need someone to play that game with me. It's, it's amazing playing it on your own. You can play it at your own pace. You can do whatever you want. You can go and get all the lore books. You can go and get all the way shrines. Um, you can get all the shards. You can do all of that stuff. But to do the bigger missions and to go and take down the dungeons and to go and take down the bosses of the map, you need somebody else. And I'm trying to bait him in very slowly by calling him every single name under the sun. It's not quite working yet, but eventually I'll break down those barriers and we'll be playing some ESO together. But yeah, if anyone actually does have ESO that wants to be able to grind on it, again, I will, I'm more than happy at starting my character again on whatever. I have it for all platforms. So if anyone wanted to start it again on whatever they want to play it on, uh, again, I'm more than happy to be able to do that. But um yeah that's that's essentially where we're up to at this moment in time nice which gives me just enough time to finish updating the command so the loot drop command now has the actual link in it this is this will this will let me see if loot drop is duplicated if we have two chatbots open we do <laughs> we do ah oh, i've done it as well ah! <laughs> so i don't know if you've seen this and i know you probably might have to do something to be able to show this but viv's put a scoop bingo card into the discord i can't yeah i can't do this uh oh I, that's I, a shame I, let me let me 
But do you know, if, if the scoop bingo card, actually, yeah, you can do it. Uh, if the scoop bingo card is in Discord, you just click on open link, get it in the URL. And if you drop that in the URL into the chat, then I can open up that scoop Discord oh. card in the browser. That's how oh, I, really? Yeah, that's how I open browsers, uh, images in Discord. Oh. The quickest way for me to get an image off my phone and screen is to send it to myself on Discord and then just open up the link. Uh, I did not know that this was a thing. I thought you had to still be. That's bizarre. Every day is school day. Uh, so okay, this is this is the scoop bingo. Let's go with bingo. Uh, so scoop bingo. Chat dead for two to three minutes. Uh, scope uh, scope live scoop live at ten ish. Uh, someone donates hundred bits. Graham's phone. <laughs> so, streamer forgets to change scene back to show gameplay. Obviously, that what happened on the scoop. So so yeah, chatbot is dead. Uh, yeah, we've had that one. Uh, WWE out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> stream crashes not yet uh chat meme graham okay that's that's probably already happened already someone in chat mentions boobs <laughs> gaming <laughs> industry drama well that's kind of the whole show uh chat body's dead again <laughs> free space graham sings again <laughs> <laughs> emoji spam we don't tend to get that one too much in the scoop uh uh baby solo stream uh okay we, we we occasionally get that on the scoop stream twitter drama uh sometimes sometimes Graham's mic issues, touch wood. We haven't had too much of that recently. Uh, Non-English in English-only chat. <laughs> Studio stream. Yay, three, t- three times a week-ish. Bibi mentioned Skyrim. Well, we'll take that one off. Mispronounce someone's yeah. username from chat. That's always <laughs> with someone that we don't know. <laughs> hype train. Oh, occasionally. Three plus people subscribe. Occasionally. Usually with the hype train stuff. And Graham mentions food. Yeah, okay. Okay, that's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah. That's part of this bingo card. Nice. Viv, you legend. Yeah, you would see it. It's slightly stolen. That's fine. Borrowing. Borrowing. Let's come and change Viv's name in chat to Streamlabs, by the way. Uh, it's just taken someone else's idea and, and evolved with it exactly the same. <laughs> uh, Lotus is going to lurk in battlefield time. God damn it. Just, you've had enough time in those jets and planes and stuff. I'll fix the spell mistakes. It, it's good. It's good. It's good. You, you were rushing it out to get it in time for the scoop. You were expecting us to be live at like half, past, half past one, two o'clock, and we went live at like quarter to 12, half 11-ish. Half 12-ish, 11-ish. Whatever. I don't know what time it was. I don't know. Uh, so it's fine. 22. That's what time we're live. Anyway, should we jump into some video game news? That's kind of what we're here for. Why not? Why not? Okay, nice. Let me uh, save that bingo card. Saved. Nice. Actually, no, I won't save it because uh, Viv says he's going to work on it. So we'll, we'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. For now, though, let me tell you about the biggest story in the world of video games. Uh, depending on where you sit in the world of video games. But the story that we will be leading with is you may have seen us talking about it yesterday on social media. We were talking about it in the office yesterday, but naturally this was always something we were coming back to. We're, we're, we're fans of the WWE games. Let's put it that way. Um, and obviously, openly, the last one wasn't great. Uh, it was, it was, it was... How can I put it before that game? The WWE games kind of stagnated a little bit before the last game. The last game, they tried to change things up and it didn't pay off. So what they did then was took a year away to come back with WWE 2K22. And uh, there's a new trailer. Not only is the new trailer, that new trailer has come out two months earlier than expected. It shows a bunch of cool stuff in there and it looks really good. So do feel free yeah. to take that one off on your... Uh, on your uh, uh, scoop bingo sheets if you've got it WWE games out of nowhere boom there we go so that's what we will lead the show with WWE 2K22 there is a new trailer we will run through that trailer and give you our thoughts and impressions uh, on the article that we have covering that we will then continue through the news with stories including Phil Spencer is evaluating Xbox's relationship with Activision that is following the Bobby Kotick allegations and that is hot off the heels of yesterday's show, Jim Ryan, PlayStation, said that they've reached out to Activision, asked them um, for more information on what they're going to do to try and steady things within their ship because PlayStation doesn't like what's happened at uh, Activision. Xbox has said the same. So, nice. Nice. We'll go mm-hmm. through that. We'll, ha- we'll have a look at the ramifications for that. And then we'll jump into some more Xbox content. Halo Infinite's better battle pass progression is now live. So if you're playing through Halo Infinite... It's, it's getting better. It's getting better. It's not the only thing that's getting better as well. Battlefield 2042 gets a day one patch to fix critical issues. And then we'll wrap things up with 
your free game Friday rundown. Not only will we tell you uh, what game you can get for free today, but we'll let you know about some discounts as well. So not, not just free games, but but the sales, the Black Friday sales coming from Sony too. So we've got quite a good chunk of news to come through uh, in the next... I've got, I would say an hour or so, but we've been live for like 20 minutes. So, you know, we've got like 25 minutes to squash all that in. Fuck! Okay, yeah. it's, it's going to be like 40 <laughs> minutes. It's going to be like 40 minutes. It's fine. It's Friday. It's a good show. You're all just chilling out, having your dinner anyway. You know who's got anywhere to be. So grab yourself a seat. Strap yourselves in. And get ready for some game time. Mr. Bib. Yes. Would you be interested in playing some WWE 2K? I would love nothing more, Graham, than to be sitting here right now with... A fresh copy of WWE. Would you be interested in some of the things that made the franchises amazing being re-added into that franchise? Uh Are you talking about the likes of GM mode being included back in the game again? (laughs) Oh, okay. As Josh Coulson at The Gamer has this article, WWE 2K22 trailer shows off Rey Mysterio's 2K showcase, my GM... And more. 2K Showcase is back, and everyone's favorite luchador will be the star, says the tagline. Let's jump into the body of the article. WWE 2K has been on hiatus for 18 months following the disastrous launch of WWE 2K20. The backlash following the game's arrival was so bad that work on 2K21 was halted, and spin-off WWE 2K Battlegrounds took its place. The series had been in serious need of a shake-up for a while before that. WWE 2K20 was just the extremely glitchy straw that broke the camel's back. It's almost like, I've said that already, but uh, let's keep going. So WWE 2K22's launch was pushed back by six months earlier this year, which had some worried all was not well behind the scenes. The good news is the game's newest trailer has just drops, uh, dropped two months ahead of schedule, and there's a lot for video game playing wrestling fans to be excited about. The return of 2K Showcase mode, the, arrive, uh, the revival even of fan-favorite GM mode under a new name, and a lot more. Rey Mysterio will be the focus of 2K22's 2K Showcase, allowing players to relive big moments from throughout the Luchador's career. None of the matches that will be included uh, uh, and playable... Oh, there we go. And playable were shown off, but it's likely to include his first world title win in WWE and the night he went all the way from number two to win the 2006 Royal Rumble. The focus on Mysterio might also explain why he's stuck around in WWE this long, uh, along with his son Dominic currently being under contract with the company. The other big takeaway... Let me hit play on on this uh, trailer, by the way. I will mute it. The other big uh, big takeaway from the trailer was the announcement of my GM. Uh, There had been rumours prior to the trailer above that the GM mode would be making its long-awaited return to WWE games. It's been missing ever since the Raw vs. SmackDown series of games, meaning it has never actually been included in a 2K title. Hopefully, the team has done its due diligence and made a faithful but modern-day version of the mode fans have been asking to see... uh, again ever since it disappeared all the modes flaunted in the neutral include uh, i was just about to pause it then because it just showed you edges first but i'll come back to that other modes flaunted in the neutral include my faction allowing you to build your own unique team and my rise which looks like a revamped version of my career universe mode will also return which is somewhat surprising considering my gm will be making its 2k debut wwe 2k22 is still slated to launch in march at which point it could face competition from aw's debut game end of article thank you very much josh colson at the gamer i will keep this on stream though bib have you seen yes. this trailer i most certainly have i think i've watched it two or three times if i'm being honest i'm super excited graham like this is this is what you would call a next gen game in my personal opinion from what we've seen so far and all the inclusions within the game modes like it's it's, it's genuinely criminal that we haven't had a gm mode in the game since i think the last was it 2009, the last SmackDown versus Raw game. We're gonna to have to do some very quick maths there. SmackDown versus Raw. Two. Oh, sorry, it's 2011. So I was way off the mark there. God um, damn it, babe. Honestly. I know, I know. 2011 was the last time that we'd seen uh, a SmackDown versus Raw game. So yeah, because then it went to WWE 12. I think after that, um, was that the one with CM Punk or the Rock on the front? Uh, no, CM Punk was 13. Anyway, going way off topic. It's criminal that we haven't seen it. You, I, I do agree with them saying it's weird that universe mode has been included as well because it's it's kind of the same thing. But GM mode had was a lot more in depth, so 
maybe that's like the streamlined version of it this time round. Like you've got football manager touch and the football manager full fledged game. It's the same thing, just watered down a little bit. So yeah, maybe keeping them both in there might be a good thing if no one wants to go into that too much of a detail with it. But from all intents and purposes, for everything that I've seen so far, graphically, modes that are being included into the game, the animations, everything else there's a lot to be excited about here. I know we haven't seen any gameplay yet. It's all been like pre predetermined screenshots and little bits of animations and things like that. Again, I can't wait to see more of this. Now there was actually meant to be showing us something in January. Originally, we wasn't meant to see this now. So it does that mean that they're ahead of schedule? Are they going to bring the release date forward? Or was it just literally like, there's a lot of shit that there's a lot of negative shit that's going around in the video games world at the moment we can capitalize on this by showing something that we've been working on that people are actually anticipated looking forward to. Let's just drop it now and then see what kind of storm we can, we can get, we can get going. And that's exactly what they've done. Uh, there was a lot, a lot of positivity yesterday from this trailer uh, and the thoughts and opinions were all positive from what I could see. I'm just trying to find a tweet. Uh... Well, Randy Otter was on 12 says timeless. Uh, there we go. There's the tweet. There's the tweet. I found it. So um, this trailer was released yesterday. We shared it before it was released because naturally um, we have a good relationship with 2K um, and we've been looking forward to playing this game. Um, naturally, out of respect of brands, we, t we won't break embargoes. If they give us information ahead of time, we won't share that information ahead of time. If that information isn't given to us, but is shared publicly by other people, just like we would with anything. We often share noted industry insiders, like uh, there was there was Resident Evil ones, and there was all sorts of other things. We will share leaks uh, as they come. This article is based on a video that was shared by 2K22. That video being shared was probably hand being forced because the video was actually leaked on social media about about 30 minutes beforehand, which is a bit shit on 2K, mm -hmm. but is also quite good because if that doesn't show you how reactive a brand can be, this wasn't meant to be shared. Um, and the reason, the, the reason I say that is because... Um, uh, someone that I actually know uh, personally, I've met him uh, in real life a few times, uh, a few times, and uh, he works for 2K. Uh, I'm not talking about Mr. T. He's actually on holiday. Enjoy your time away, Mr. T. No doubt you're still watching <laughs> from Dubai, but still, it's this guy, Corey Andres, um, or Corey Essay on Twitter. Um, I think he's global. Oh, let's see if it says anything. Global head of community at 2K. He shared also uh, a quick look at me internally uh, when embargoes break after people spend literal weeks. Uh, and time planning things. Ah, oh, well, enjoy. And it's him. It's, it's the, obviously um, the, the famous door being trashed. Fucking. Blah, blah, blah. You, you get it. You get it. Yeah. Anyway, so he's sharing uh, that, which would let you let you know that it was it was leaked. It was ahead of time, and they are quite frustrated uh, about that. That said, they did go fuck. Okay, it's already out. Let's throw this out now. So whether it was mm -hmm. only the embargo being broken by a few hours, whether it was a few days, whether it was a few weeks, we don't quite know what it was. But GG's to Two K for going. Okay, this is out. People are owning this. There's a shit quality video. Um, it was. I think it was put on YouTube or something like that accidentally or something. I can't remember exactly what happened, but the video was out there. So Two K pushed it out. That is good. Yeah. You own own it. Take there's a this conversation, direct it straight away. Community will run away if you don't hold their hand. They will take two and two and make four thousand three hundred and twenty six. <laughs> you need to make it just four. Um and, and that's what yeah. they did. So GG's to that. Um But uh yeah, so so the video was leaked. It wasn't necessarily meant to come out. The interesting thing though, like you say, is it's it's two months earlier than expected. This, we weren't expecting any news until January at all. The game's not coming out until March. So to start seeing news when we've got the end of November, all of December, then obviously January and then February for a game to come out in March, we're still five months away from this. And for this yep. game to be looking this good at this point in time, I are, this is what WWE Games needs, in my opinion. Not a leak, but a game to be looking as good as it does right now. I mean... Uh, Going through what was shared in the article as well, obviously the re-inclusion of, of modes past that 2K have never had before. So 2K have taken 18 months. If you come back after 18 months 
um, in the wilderness and just have a fixed game, that's good. To come back after 18 months in the wilderness and have a fixed game that actually brings back things that you've never had, okay, well, that's not good. Mm -hmm. That's progression. That's showing you using your time, which you can't really complain about that. And my biggest issue, um, I spent actually quite a bit of time uh, playing WWE 2K19, and I could not get it to work for me. Is that it was two K nineteen? I always get my numbers mixed up. It was twenty that didn't happen, right? Or, or, did, or was it twenty one that didn't happen? No, it was twenty one that didn't okay. happen. We was playing twenty. Yeah, there we go. Uh, numbers, minds. Anyway, I spent a lot of time playing two K twenty, and I couldn't. I could not get it to gel for me. What I, I wanted it to be something else in my mind, and I, I don't know if it was Chris Scullion on VGC or someone. I read an article on it yesterday, um, and it was basically saying. Um, you have to use a reversal meter uh, in WWE 2K20. Um, so, uh, uh, so you basically fill up and you can then have a reversal. If Bibby's hitting the shit out of me and I've not got reversal, I just effectively have to sit there and wait for my guy to wake up or get to the point where I'm, I can reverse a move. And if he reverses my reversal, well, then I continue watching my guy get battered. It's just a bit like hands off. Okay, this game's a bit meh. They've changed that in the game. Um in terms of the way that the whole reversal stuff, they change the the button mapping and, and so on, which has my attention because I've seen a lot of people going, yeah, this 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 these changes I'm not on board with, and it's like, yeah, but a lot of people drifted away from WWE games, and I think mm-hmm. the control schemes were a big part of that. So it will no doubt upset the fans that have stuck by the game over the last few months, uh, last few years, should I say? But it hemorrhaged a lot of fans as well. Not not because mm-hmm. of the stuff over the last 18 months. I'm not talking about before that. It hemorrhaged a lot of fans. The changing the colour schemes back is a great move. Plus the fact that they're bringing back stuff um, from the past. And how good does it look? I shared a screenshot uh, in, in response to Ice Cream's tweet yesterday of Edge's face. And it looked shit because it was a screenshot of a Twitter video, which is obviously going to look like a bag of, uh, bag <laughs> of daz. But... but Edge's face, there's a bit where he's walking down to the ring doing the whole, yeah, I'm a WWE superstar, oh, fuck, oh, and it just looked so good. I mean, it's like that level of face stuff you're expecting in in first-party Sony games, not just someone's ring walk on a, on a WWE game. Yeah. And, and not that WWE games always look ugly. WWE games was always about the face. If you get a face looking good, then the rest of the body just kind of fits in. But obviously, over the last couple of years, we've kind of become acclimatized with WWE games looking okay looking all right but not pushing the boundaries at least not for wrestling games and and some of the faces goldberg's face to be uh, edge's face and stuff in those trailers look really really good to me i agree um let me jump into the chat then timeless says uh very few ideas are original now more extensions um and improvements on original ideas i mean it's always difficult it's always difficult because there's the the reason to the people think outside the box is because being inside the box is tedious. Um, more often than not, going outside of the box is actually it's not just a case of people go outside the box to try and add less tediousness to make things fresher. But the reason you're inside the box is because it works. Trying to find something outside the box that also works is different. Is difficult um, and often doesn't work. Um, so WWE reinventing, bringing back older ideas as a fresh idea. It makes sense. The GM mode, um, not being around since, what, 2011, Bib said, or 2009, um, whenever it was, that's that's a huge mode that 2K have never done. So for them, that is thinking outside the box, whereas it's just bringing back things that were in the box that we'll put elsewhere outside the box. So bring it back in the box. Oh, look at this new thing. Uh, it's, it, yeah, it's nice. <laughs> Last I game. always wondered oh, why they didn't have the GM mode. Like, I understand it was a change. It, was, it, it went from THQ over to 2K. I understand that they didn't obviously didn't want to bring that many things forward, but for such a popular mode, it's weird that they went with something completely different with universe mode. Did they expect that to be a lot better? And they just haven't really reworked it enough for it to be even close to what people assume with the GM mode. Like it it does feel a bit bizarre and it, I don't know what has it did they just lose that much goodwill with consumers that they think, do you know what? biggest win that we can have on the table now forget about the graphics and that is bringing back a mode that everybody wanted in the first place is that the only reason we're seeing it now i am always interested in things like that because there's always things that fans like that disappear from games and there's usually reasons for it um so for example to give a pez example everyone go master league online 
just give us just give us MLO. It was the best game ever. It wasn't. It was massively flawed. But people look back and see something with rose tinted glasses and think it was the best thing in the world. It was massively flawed in terms of growth, um, in terms of in-game economics, in terms of company business economics. Master League Online is harder to monetize as well. So there's obviously those sort of factors. Um, but fans wanted that. And if you can bring something like Master League Online back, fans are like, yeah. And, mm. and and that's kind of what they've done. So there's always reasons for things to disappear within video games. It's not always what fans want. Um, and it's 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 not always in the fans' best interests either. Sometimes it is in the fans' best interests because it's in the business's best interests. And if that makes money, then it will be ultimately be in the fans' best interest down the line. That sort of like two-stage approach. But for whatever reason it is, we never have that context, which is a shame because there's probably been innocent conversations with like, okay, we'd think my GM doesn't have the legs. We think my GM um, is a mode that we've seen and done and people are just doing the same thing over and over again. Do they want the same thing? Or the amount of resources to make storylines evolve within that would would be akin to building a GTA online and we don't have the funds and stuff for that. Mm-hmm. So it would just be, it'd be a crap attempt at it. Whatever, they've probably sat down and had reasons gone, do you know what? It's easier for us to ditch my GM and do something different. And then over a few years gone, actually, do you know what? Let's bring it back. Like the random select re-inclusion in Pezzy football. Um, if you haven't played it, apologies. But let's just say there was a mode that was really good um, and loved and then it was brought back. It wasn't brought back perfectly in my opinion, but it was, it was a mode that absolutely deserves to have been brought back. Um, and if they can do that with my GM, but but ex- extend and build up on what that has been previously, then that's 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 a win. That's a win. Because uh, that well, way, next gen is saying there, saying it was always the way transition to a new generation, strip out features, slowly head the back over the next gen. It's been ten years. <laughs> it's genuinely been ten years, and we didn't see this beyond the last gen this was we're talking about 360 gen at this point talking about two gens ago since we've seen gm mode so they're completely disregarded the last gen and the entirety of that game span for now to be a 2k to take it to 2k 22 and now we're going to see it back again 10 years is a long time for any video game a lot of them don't survive that long especially in the sports world the amount of gens though in there because gen obviously we're talking about specifically ps4 to ps5 but you've got ps4 to ps5 you've got take uh uh, thq to 2k you've got Mm. um uh ukes to i always forget the name of the studio working on yeah i do too like my, my brain goes vicarious visions and it's like that's clearly not vicarious visions it's Chris- visual visual something i can't remember this is good this is annoying this is this is embarrassing what visual concepts there we go like visual concept. I, I always go vicarious visions and then start to go down <laughs> like crystal dynamics and it's like it's not either because there's a v <laughs> and there's a c so like the visual concepts uh, it's like visual vicarious visions crystal dynamics concepts but yeah there you go at least next gen base knows video games do check out next gen base on youtube if you want if you want to see some content um that is about video games where they actually remember what they're talking about go check out next gen base <laughs> nice uh so yeah, there's, there's a lot of generational switches in there in terms of like I said, uh, take two to two K, um, visual concepts moving on from Ukes, PS4 to PS5. Uh, there's a bunch of changes within there. Plus eighteen months of it lost. Because, well, tw- tw- uh, say eighteen months. It's more like closer to thirty months if you include the the, the development time and release window of two K twenty, which wasn't up to scratch as well. So there's 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 a good chunk of that missing. Yeah. So. F- when you look at it and break it down, it's understandable for something like my GM to have not come back. It's nice to see that them going, okay, we are now back. We are doing the now, but also bringing back the things that were lost from the when. Uh, so I hope, I hope this game is as enjoyable as this trailer suggests that it possibly could be. Also, um, from my own yeah. personal standpoint, Rey Mysterio, yes, please. I mean, Rey Mysterio, he's, he's, I mean, David will tell you. Um, I was always a Jeff Hardy, Rey Mysterio, any, anyone, like, I mean, it started out with anyone that could do a Frankensteiner. WWE, like 25 years ago, was if you could do a Frankensteiner, that's it, you're an absolute high flyer. Then obviously, people came in and started doing backflip, triple somersault, shooting star presses off the top of a cage through three, t- and it's like, fuck me! So that kind of person is my kind of person. It being Rey Mysterio you Jr. Who's a weight. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That, that was me, that was me. Um, so yes, please, I would absolutely love that well, career. Hopefully, they get that balance right. Like, I want, I want my cruiserweights to be agile. I want them to feel fast. I want them to be high flyers. I want them to be able to 
do um, moonsaults off the off the ropes and stuff like that. That would be amazing. I want my I want my big heavyweight guys. I want them to feel slower. I want them to feel a little bit more. Yeah, slow. I mean, I when you got when they're going in for punches or something like that, it's just a little bit more slow, but they do more damage. Do you know what I mean? That's the kind of balance that I want. I don't want like when you play any like here comes the pain or shut your mouth or something like that. They all have they all have the same speed. They all punch at the same speed. They can all jump as high as each other. Like you can see Undertaker jumping off the top row is the same height as Jeff Hardy or something like that. I want them to I want them to be a little bit more different. Do you know what I mean? I want them to have the different play styles. Yeah, that'll I, be that'll be fantastic. It was always kind of you never got the balance right. Like you'd 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 be like, yeah, I'm I'm Captain Cruiserweight. Look at me going fast, going bit, 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 jabs and kicks <laughs> and punches and and somersault kicks and 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 then the the, the heavyweight will just go Zhoof! one punch and it's yeah. like, oh well, that's my cruiserweight dead then. Uh, uh, okay, well I can I'm fast and I'm rapid and I can avoid hits, but when I get hit, it's game over. So yeah. like it's like one person does ten hits. Uh, whereas the other person gets hit 10 times but does one hit. And it's like, okay, well, that kind yeah. of balances. But in reality, when you put those together, it's not quite the same. Because, yeah, if if one 10-hit person strings two hits together, then that other cruiserweight player has to has to pretty much play without being hit for four minutes of in-game gameplay. Yeah. Which just doesn't, <laughs> just doesn't work. Um, Was it Here Comes a Pain where they introduced, like, your cruiserweights couldn't, like... Uh, do suplexes to heavyweights or anyone who was physically taller than them. It, it so could, I remember you obviously you could do that before, Rand. It could have been, it could have been, which I don't mind. I don't mind. And I also don't think it's perfect either. And this is where it gets, it gets super difficult for devs because like super heavyweights, you think shouldn't be able to like do stuff. But then again, you've got people like Vader who used to do the fucking Vader salt, the moon salt off the top. It's like Vader shouldn't be able to moon salt, but yet he can. And then you'll, you'll get the occasion tiny little lightweight cruiserweight yeah. that will pick up a fucking Yokozuna and, and Powerball. It's like, well, but but it occasionally happens, and it's like, how do you balance that if you if you're a dev because you have you want to have something in the rules that says no, you can't do this, but mm. then occasionally someone does, and it's yeah, yeah. Do you know what? Devs... Lesnar broke his neck doing that, didn't he? Oh, what, doing oh, what was it? He did a flip off the turnbuckle as one of his finishers, and I can't remember what it was called. Uh, was, is it, it's the backflip one. Was it shoot, sh- Billy yeah. Kidman did it? Shooting Star Press, Kidman's finisher. That's where I, that, shooting Star Press for me was always Billy Kidman because he was the one that like made it big things in like WCW. Yeah, I've seen a backflip, but going forward, <laughs> what is this? Uh, there you go, Lesnar doing a shooting Star Press. Oh, hang on, there you go. That's the one. That's the one. <laughs> yeah, um, I fucking love that move by the way. Billy, uh, shooting Star Press. Yeah. Although I'm, I'm, I mean, it's, it's, it's that's more difficult than than a Swanton Bomb. Or sent on bomb, but but Jeff Harris went on bomb. Yeah, yeah, from the top of the Titan Tron. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like that. Yeah. <laughs> or Shane McMahon jumping off the top of it as well. Do you know what I mean? Like obviously, it's, it's it, it doesn't quite have the impact as seeing someone literally putting their body and life on the line doing it, doing it off that compared to with a video game. But if that's a kind of real, real realistic simulation, you need to be able to try and get. The, the crowd to get amped up to be able to do that and then the camera's doing it in live or like a slow motion or something <sighs> panning in quite close like you need the whole package to make you feel like you're in that world if that's the world that you want them to be in you can't have arcade and simulation both being the same thing but either way I'm, I'm down for whatever we get as long as it looks as good and plays as well as what it potentially looks like in these trailers right now Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, let's jump through the comments uh, so we can wrap this and move on. Timeless has a lot of comments. Where were they? I did see them. Let me jump back up. Um, um, More info in Jan. Uh, Last game was No Mercy. Hoping Jan will be the March release date announcement. Um, Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. You think we're in November and we're not expecting announcements. This is like a pre-announcement announcement, but usually a pre-announcement announcement is like a teaser. Oh, more coming soon. This could have been the whole January announcement. I, I actually... I hope it wasn't because that could make their January announcement be like, well, what the fuck do we talk about now? <laughs> so this this is that good that it could be that. Hopefully, this is like not this is the storm, but hopefully you're still the calm before the storm. If we get more stuff in January, then that is fucking exciting times. Also, talking about calm before the storms, talking about exciting times, you guys still don't know what we have in plan for WWE. We've been saying this. We had to kind of <laughs> yeah. we had to kind of stop talking about it because we didn't want to be one of those people that keeps going, um 
we've got news soon, soon. We did, so we kind of we spoke about it. Said we got something cool and exciting to come. And then obviously WWE was was postponed by six months. So we just we just we just put it on a back burner. We left it. We still have exciting things coming for WWE. By the way, we do. So this being exciting. It's fucking exciting because that makes yeah. our potential exciting stuff even more exciting. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully the game is good. If the game's not good and we don't enjoy it, we will be honest and say that. Um, this looks good. We're not saying it looks good because we have exciting things coming. We're saying it looks good because it looks good, which makes our exciting things even more exciting. So so hopefully we're all we're all having the best time of our lives when it gets announced in January. Yeah. And then even better when it all comes along in March. But uh, jumping back through then, I wonder how many wrestlers who were fired overnight are going to be in the WWE trailer. Uh, Viv goes into lurking. Thank you very much, Viv. Uh, Viv for the lurk as well. Um, uh, at this point, with the releases and the amount WWE have done in the last few months. I imagine a fair few will be in game. Uh, Next year, basis. I feel for the devs though. To be fair, spend a bunch uh, of time making playable wrestlers, and then WWE release eighty in a year. See this. This is where. I drop out, and I now have to start to defer my knowledge to you guys. I did see, um, I think it was Chucky talking about it last night. I think he said something along the lines of, Chucky Boy, by the way, is, is, is a long-time viewer of the channel. He he sadly went and got a job, so he doesn't tend to join his live uh, as often as he used to do. But um, he's, he quite bluntly said something like, fuck off WWE or something along those lines last night to which I then had to go and look at what was happening because I don't watch a lot of WWE anymore um and him and Ravi were talking about Ravi Parma aka Parma 93 by the I think he is I think it's it's either Parma 93 or Parma 1993 on Twitch anyway really good guy do check him out plays some Pokemon it's always Mm -hmm. in show streams um and they were talking about it last night, released a bunch of names that I don't even know. So if anyone can can summarize the current situation in chat in one paragraph for me, that would be very useful because because I know I know that I was talking about, I mean, you know, you know the detail. I mentioned Billy Kidman shooting star pressing. I mean, if that's not someone that knows a lot about wrestling back in the day, then I don't know what is. But but uh but right now, no idea. Someone mentioned Tegan something or other. I was like, no idea. Is not that John Legend's wife? <laughs> no idea. <laughs> uh anyway, uh AEW's game won't release until later that year. Uh, at the earliest would be my bet. Randy Orton was the cover of WWE twelve. Uh, I think it's WWE PR spin for all the people who got fired at the same time because they they get slated every time they do it. Um uh timeless says i think making a game every two years is a good move gives gives the devs time to perfect the game and make it even better also gives them time to actually change things rather than copy and paste and only slightly improve what's already in the game uh 100%, 100%. There's been conversations, myself and Bib, prob- I, n- without a doubt, no doubt, I've not even seen these conversations, but I imagine Next Gen Base have had plenty of articles or videos saying the same sort of thing, particularly looking at sports games, football games, the like. Is there a need for an annual cycle? We've had the conversation around Pez and football and whether FIFA will go to that sort of free-to-play yearly iteration sort of kind of stuff. Um, there is a huge conversation around that. And if this game from WWE is spot on, then that will only add more fuel to that conversation. Okay, they took 18 months off and went from arguably one of the worst wrestling games to be released to one of the best, let's say, if it is. We haven't played it, don't know. Uh, Then that would obviously feed that conversation uh raise a good wrestler uh to help use to promote the game he's a massive merch seller uh, and great to have kids on board uh it was always the way transition to a new gen strip outfit oh we've, we've covered that bit actually um graham always liked anyone who was useless on backstage fights because they couldn't use their finisher absolutely i remember smackdown uh the very first smackdown um and it was like you, you get into the like the backstage brawl and you could throw someone into a cooker, but you couldn't do the swanton bomb off the top rope. Great, <laughs> fun times. You couldn't do the people's elbow either, but but that's a different story. Uh, Mania nineteen against Angle. Uh, WWE is all made up, so it doesn't matter if it's unre- unrealistic. Surely, says Tito. Uh, says the man who was talk- talking talking about playing Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven this morning on Discord. That's all made up. <laughs> Do you think that's real? Now <laughs> uh, he didn't snap his head off. I'll never know. Shooting Star Press is my favorite move by far. Uh, Luchasaurus did one at oh gone again. Uh, did one at Full Gear off the stage. Incredible stuff. Uh, there is still a possibility event uh, NXT UK uh, cuts to some, so we might get another leak coming soon. Um, they've released so many people this year; it's crazy. Another eight last night. Uh, Drake Maverick has been released twice in the space of eighteen months. <laughs> and okay, uh, in April they released a shitload of people. Last month they announced record profits and they cut something like twenty people immediately after the call. 
Like, what, what is happening? That's what I mean. If anyone can summarise why, or, or is that the question? Is that the question that nobody knows the answer to? Why, if we're making record profits, are we, are we binning people? It's, it's, when we have, see, I don't know. I've, I kept out a bit. When we have that conversation, though, about Bobby Kotick and Activision, it's, it's shithousery. So why? What is it? I don't know. They always say they've had massive profits, then site budget cuts. Why? Because Vince McMahon is a... Is that, is, that, is that the Cristiano Ronaldo? Sue? Is that what you're going for? Because you've spelled it with a C, not an S and an I. I don't, I don't, oh, cool. Okay, I get you. Anyway, anyway, we'll put a pin in that. WWE 2K trailer looks shit hot. It does. It looks really good. And I hope it is everything I need to bring me back into a WWE wilderness, uh, out of the wilderness and into the, uh, the limelight because I miss playing wrestling games. I, I've, I, I tried 2K20. It wasn't for me. Hopefully, 2K22 mm. is what I need it to bring me back in because w w whether I don't like it or not, some exciting shit coming. That's all I'm saying. Make sure you stick around, baby. Okay. That's enough of that, though. Um, let's get back into... I did mention Bobby Kotick and Activision there, so that's a good jumping-off point. As we jump into the next article, Chris Scullion at VGC says that Phil Spencer is evaluating Xbox's relationship with Activision following Kotick allegation. The Xbox boss says the team is disturbed and deeply troubled by recent events. All I'm saying is that I've nailed Xbox boss these days. I, I don't think I've made a mistake saying that for like two months now, so, so I'm over this. You're doing this. really well, mate. I'm, I'm so proud. I'm over this. It's done. In the bag. Um, Xbox boss Phil Spencer has confirmed that he's, quote, evaluating, end quote, its relationship with Activision Blizzard following the company's response to allegations about its CEO, Bobby Kotick. In an email sent to Xbox staff and seen by Bloomberg, let me just stop for just a second, by the way. Um, I did mention that we've got five new emotes, uh, spaces one of the ones that we've suggested is xbox boss by the way <laughs> just <laughs> it, it may not be ready for weeks yet but but it's in the list anyway um in an email sent to Xbox staff and seen by Bloomberg, Spencer stated that he and the leadership team were, quote, disturbed and deeply troubled by the horrific events and actions, end quote, at Activision Blizzard. Spencer stated in his email that this type of behavior has no place in our industry and that he was evaluating all aspects of Xbox's relationship with Activision Blizzard and making ongoing proactive adjustments. On Tuesday, a Wall Street Journal report alleged that Kotick was aware of multiple sexual misconduct allegations at Activision Blizzard and also accused him of personally mistreating several female employees. I think I think we can stop there. Yeah, we can. I mean, there's a lot yeah. more, and it does give some sort of nuances. The only thing I will do is I will jump down to this bit. If you guys missed the story that we covered yesterday, um, on Wednesday, uh, it was claimed that Sony Interactive Entertainment boss Jim Ryan told PlayStation employees he was disheartened and frankly stunned to read that Activision has not done enough to address a deep-seated culture of discrimination and harassment. Quote, we outreached to Activision immediately after the, after the article was published to express our deep concern and to ask how they plan to address the claims made in the article. He wrote in an email to staff. Let me just, just jump off there at that point. So we've seen Jim Ryan of PlayStation say they're disheartened and frankly stunned We've seen now Phil Spencer say they are disturbed and deeply troubled. Surely something has to give, right? What What are your thoughts, babe? Yeah, I mean, it's more of the same from yesterday, in my opinion. This is literally uh, you take out the, the PlayStation, uh, take out Jim Ryan, replaced with um, Phil Spencer. It's the exact same thing. Um, when you have two of the biggest uh, platforms out there that people are using to play their video games on, are not supporting you and show and throwing uh, rightly so a lot of shade on your company. I haven't checked the stocks yet, uh, but I imagine they probably did take a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a dive again this morning off the back of this news. Like this is at this moment in time, it feels like it's open season against that division Blizzard, and rightly so as well. Again. This it always feels like when you when you are criticizing a company that you're also criticizing the staff. You are to a large degree, but not the everyday people who are the ones that are that are basically holding the company up at this moment in time. The people who are under the microscope are the people at the top that are creating. I try, I try, I'm still trying to be polite, and I don't understand why. But they are just creating a super toxic environment. Um, 
so yeah again you can you can literally just interchange whatever we said yesterday and apply it to this but it's like times two now this is like a multiplier do you know what i mean when you have somebody else especially as big as xbox and playstation uh and now criticizing your company you are literally one step away from ties being cut and the only platform that you could potentially go to then is the pc element of things obviously the heart the blizzard are incredibly incredibly massive on pc like it compared to their console sales of their games it's a drop in the ocean if uh, well you can't really the steam is steam come out and start talking about it i don't even know if that's a thing like you don't really see i i don't really see people from steam coming out and talking that much um but in terms of platforms they've only really got steam to fall back on if someone from steam comes out and goes you know what fuck these guys as well whoo uh, actually have their own launcher on uh, on pc bib yeah i'm i was yeah yeah uh i'm uh, yeah i was i was trying to find because you, obviously you have the playstation you have the Ma nintendo you have the microsoft obviously they do they can have their own launcher on there but aren't a lot of the activision blizzard games on steam as well they don't just necessarily have their own um launcher i don't know uh blizzard have their own store yeah is that what you used to play world of warcraft i know you can't play well on uh, this, well on steam i have um an acti one called battle is it battle.net is that the one so battle.net is the activision yeah. launcher is that what we're talking about uh yeah 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 i was i was trying i was trying to use steam as a comparison as well because obviously steam, your, your pc you can put whatever launcher you want on there do you know what i mean they've got origin you've got ubisoft you've got steam you've got gog you've got all these other ones um every every single publisher seems to have their own launcher on ah, there so yeah, yeah. Um, okay, yeah. an ah. epic game store I was, I was trying to think of the all-encompassing pc thing but it, I, I don't necessarily think that the there is one so they I mean, can't really have someone coming from that side coming out and giving them the third degree really but who who yeah. would that be like gabe newell because i don't actually know that how the so obviously we know we've got jim ryan and we know we've got phil spencer they're, yeah. they're the kind of figurehead people that you will see there's obviously other people within the mix uh on both sides but i don't know if gabe newell is that person for valve and steam um he's the only one that i ever see making stuff that that, that yeah are talking about stuff that makes our headlines whether he's the actual yeah. guy or not but i mean i suppose though that i mean next gen base says it, i think you still need to use battle.net even if you buy on steam so you so that would suggest that you could still buy through steam though i imagine a lot of people if you can buy through steam and launch through battle.net as you can do with a bunch of other mm -hmm. launchers that would still be a big thing um i think imagine though if we got playstation and xbox and we'll just call it PC, even though we know it's not entirely PC. PlayStation, Xbox, and <laughs> yeah. PC um, coming out and then going, okay, we the, we are fucking furious at this. Yeah. Um, surely that would have to make make some sort of changes. I mean, jumping back to the comments. Um, oh, actually, let me jump back through even more comments. Uh, where's my mouse gone? There it is. Uh, the official word, actually, this is about WDB in the last one. The official word is budget reasons. The unofficial one is WDB are looking to sell and want to make a company, uh, make the company's books more appealing. This has been rumored for years, though, so more likely just WDB being WDB. Okay, okay. Okay, back into this article, though. Next Gen Base says, absolutely fuck Bobby Kotick. That's pretty much where I stand. Uh, Timeless says, uh, funny, they are only stunned and disheartened now. This has been going unreported for, uh, for a while now. Um, yeah, the, this is just in regards to we've never had anything actually point directly at at Bobby Kotick before. We've had all sorts of frat boy culture articles. We've seen some fucking horrendous things, but nothing that's pointed the finger at Bobby Kotick and said, look, we actually have evidence that you knew this was going on and you have turned your back on this, which is where it changes things slightly in terms of yeah. if if we have proof that the, the culture has been shit, but it's been one of those things where it's kind of like, oh, it's just a just an unhappy coincidence of events that led to this getting through without people realizing it. And then it was just embedded and we'll, we'll change it now. Whereas if somebody goes, you actually, yeah, you're saying you didn't know about it and you're going to change it now. You, you knew about this. We can prove that you knew about this. That changes things, which is why at this point, that's when um, first parties are having to go, woo, Okay, yeah, I know we had uh, that super special launch Call of Duty campaign where we put it all over the store and we did all these things and we said it's the best game ever, but we didn't know any of this, so we're actually disappointed. So they have to, for their own sort of uh, sake, kind of distance themselves. Uh, how much impact do you think that's going to have, though, you guys? I mean, I would love for this to have some impact. Like we've said before, if it's not hurting the wallet, it's not hurting them at all. Um 
could PlayStation and Xbox both go, both going, we don't like that. No, no. Is that going to have much impact? Or is this going to be more like what we said yesterday? Is this going to only be heard by that 10%, 20% of gamers that actually listen to the industry rather than just play the games? Because with the games becoming more mainstream now, there are a lot of players that just play games that don't know games industry. More than ever before. Because 20 years ago, you played games, you bought your games and you bought the games magazines and you knew who the journalists were and stuff like that. And there wasn't really as much of the casual as there is these days. Mm -hmm. So will this even change anything? Is this just corporate spiel that PlayStation and Xbox need to say? Do you see, does anyone see Bobby Kotick actually leaving his position in the next six months? Six days, six weeks, six months. Let's just do a full encapsula in six months. Does anyone actually see him going? Or do we think he's just going to dig his heels in? The, the board are going to go, well, he's made his billions. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I, I, still, I, I still think it's a draw. Like, I, I, I honestly can't tell you. I'm, it sounds like I'm sitting on the fence with it. But I, I genuinely think that he's happy to ride this out himself i don't think he will walk i think he'll be pushed but who's going to push him like the the, the benefit of all uh, of playstation and xbox coming out and speaking against it is it's a rallying cry for the people who are on the front line that are doing these walkouts it's but it's spurring them on it's giving them the 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 idea that actually these are the people back us as well like it's giving them a new lease of life to go out and speak up and do these rallies and these um mass walkouts it's giving them justification shall we say um so yeah i think this is it, it, for for the people who are on the ground floor that are the ones that are be that worthy and victimized and the people who are alongside them and standing up for them it's it's giving them acceptance I, I don't, i'm trying to i'm trying to find the word for it and i don't think it, it's just not coming to my head but it's basically spurring them on because they know that they have their backs covered um, and they know that there is justification for their actions, especially if like PlayStation, Xbox are coming out and defending them as well. So, it, 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 Bobby Kotick will not walk himself. His ego is too big. I'll be extremely surprised. But again, who's going to push him? No one is. No one's. No one is. He's making them too much money. Yeah, that's. I mean, that that that's kind of where I see it. I think there could be there could be a time where he goes in the next two years because he thinks okay fuck this shit i'm just going to take a big payout if i say i'm going to walk then the board might actually go well if you're going to walk because you're ready to walk and it's nothing to do with these allegations then yeah that's good for business he is six million dollars fuck off um <laughs> so there may be that sort of stuff in a couple of years but i can't see him walking now um Timeless says, Call of Duty sold way lower than normal uh, and below expectation uh, this year in the UK. Uh, Next Gen Base says, if Microsoft and sold, uh, Sony pull Call of Duty from digital sale until uh, court it goes, big call, but potentially could happen. Um, that's a message and a half. Something like 90% of Vanguard sales were digital, apparently. Uh, and Taze Baz said, yes, Fallen Sword. I see... Yeah, I, think, I, I can't see the Fallen on the Sword until after, as mentioned, obviously, just a second ago. If that... If that was this or just the fact that it was due to it being a World War II take? Who knows? I, yeah, I, I think it's probably more the World War II take, uh, if I'm being honest, because it's it's actually a really good game. Genuinely, Call of Duty Vanguard is better than I expected it to be, in my opinion. Obviously, I'm not everyone's opinion. Most people that I will that I have spoken to have said the same thing. Actually, it's, I enjoyed it much. It's a Call of Duty, don't get me wrong, so it's not really doing anything different, but as, as a Call of Duty game goes, it's actually really good, really well-balanced. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, um, ultimately the board will decide, uh, but only if it affects them commercially, says Tito. Yeah, agreed, Vanguard is, is, is pretty good. It's good, it's good. There's a good comment, though. Um, let me jump back. I, I left it because I want to come back to it. Next in base, one man's hubris versus an entire company's output on at least one of three avenues where they make most of their money. Who will win? The correct answer is nobody. Nobody wins. Exactly. That's that's kind of what it is. It's it's it. If if he leaves and the company has let's let's say he's a good leader. Obviously, the evidence would suggest that he's an extremely flawed leader. Let's put it that way. You can probably phrase it more stronger than that. But let's say he's a good leader for the business and he moves in to get someone shit. That's bad for Call of Duty. Bad for fans. Bad for everything. Um, let's say he stays and he's a terrible leader. Um, that's bad for the people that work there, which is bad for the quality of. A workmanship which could then lead to bad games people lose people lose everywhere what, whatever situation it's not a great situation so <sighs> yeah I, I can't I, I mean i agree with timeless um as much as it would be a good idea for them and it would make a massive statement they're all about making money as yeah. well yeah 
that they can't afford to do that, especially with the game this time of this. Imagine, imagine pulling it from digital stores this time of year. And I say this time of year, if you are watching this, obviously, I don't, I don't understand why you would be watching this in June in 2020, uh, 2022, but. This is this is November. This is the run up to Christmas. I, I mean, think someone said it's thirty four days. Damien Nacho did say the other day that he's going to listen to the entire podcast series from the beginning because <laughs> he's going to go running and he's going to. I was like, that's five hundred episodes. If you listen to us one a day, you're going to be listening to us for over a year and a half. <laughs> yeah, I mean, fair play. So yeah, it's it's uh, they will never do that as be, genuinely for the money. Like not having it ready for Christmas is shooting themselves in the foot big time let's look at let's look at a, a recent example can anyone name a game of substantial size and potential profitability that's been pulled from a market i can only think of one like on console should i say once uh, once it's been launched i can only think of one and that is cyberpunk which didn't get pulled from xbox consoles I mean, Cyberpunk and CD Projekt were like, yeah, it's fine. PlayStation were like, it's absolutely not. Let's get rid of it. Boom. And then it came back. Xbox didn't even pull Cyberpunk when it was already pulled by PlayStation. And that was that was um, the only one that you can think of. If anyone else can think of another one, obviously do feel free to let me know. That. Or something of... Uh, uh, well, actually, if you can ever think of anything else, there isn't anything else of that size, that scale, that sort of impact. And Xbox didn't even pull that. Um, they allowed you to get... Re- uh, Re- what's the word I'm looking for? Refunds. I was like, rewards? Nope, that's not what it is. Refunds. They allowed you to get refunds and they, they put stuff in place to make that easy. So they uh, uh, helped in that sort of sense, but they didn't even pull that. I mean, that, and that was something that was completely visually broken for, for, for a lot of people and still is for, for enough people. It still is for me to, for it to remain in the draw. Um, now, like, if that's something that was broken, the, Call of Duty isn't broken i mean the the management behind it clearly is but the game itself isn't so if you've got a f- fully working product i they're never going to pull that they are never going to pull that like like i mean ben did say obviously um big call potentially could happen yeah the potential is there like we say big call though they would they'd never take that uh, the amount of money that they would lose and uh, the thing is the, the, you've got that sort of situation where they stood at the other side of the room looking at each other, PlayStation and Xbox. PlayStation go, well, I'm going to get rid of Call of Duty now. Xbox goes, yeah, yeah, yeah me too. Uh, yeah, of course. Oh, oh, I didn't. I accidentally forgot to pull, pull it. I've now got all of the Call of Duty player base because that's the place where you can buy it and we stuck by it forever. Boom, that's it. Mm-hmm. It, it would need firm handshakes, locked eyes, and, and until, yeah, yeah. It's, until it's actually off the store kind of thing. Because if one goes, yeah, but we didn't not mm. actually, yeah, no, we kept it. Uh, so it it will never it will never happen. Oh, well, uh, Ben said there from a business standpoint, pulling cod is crazy, but the positive optics would generate would be insane. Again, I agree, but they are a business. They need to be making money, and that is one of their biggest money spinners. They can't afford to gamble with something like that. They can come out and be supportive of. Uh, the walkouts and stuff like that all the one but essentially they're a business they need to make money and uh, again it would be amazing for them to be able to do that and stick up um for the staff over at division blizzard but i don't think they can make a gamble on a game like this this close to christmas it's it's just impossible for them and plus there'll be there'll be us giving them pats on the back and stuff like that but it's not going to pay the bills it's not going to make their stock prices increase and that's essentially what they are there for can you tell that Nick Jim Bass is a content creator, by the way? Like playing devil's advocate in the chat. That's that's our Absolutely. job. But we but we enjoy it. We enjoy it. <laughs> Feel free. Nice. Um I got a refund for Cyberpunk on Xbox. I still have access to it, even the refund system is broken. <laughs> uh, from a business standpoint, pulling cod is crazy. Oh, you read that one actually, sorry. Um uh, Metal Gear 2 or 3 were pulled a few weeks back due to uh, due to license issues. Yeah, that that was a different thing though. So we know about that one. That was um it was it was on konami's website it was basically um some of the content within the game wasn't licensed so it had to be pulled but that wasn't like there was anything wrong with the game that was that this game legally can't be sold which you you get um i don't know what the wording was but the gist of it was it will let you know when they're back kind of thing so that's one of yeah. those it's not licensed it's going to get relicensed and it'll be good to go. So that's a different kind of situation there. But GTA Trilogy pulled off Steam. Um, that's a different one as well. Uh, that's Steam rather it than console. Um, what's that? 
it, 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 the trilogy as in the definitive edition or yeah, the original yeah. trilogy because wasn't that take two that took that down yeah. themselves steam didn't do that and that was them taking it down because they knew that hot coffee was in there and they were going to get fucked up <laughs> in more senses than one <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah enjoy the fun so that one but not on console because the reason it was taken from steam is because there was dodgy game sex within it um mm -hmm. Which you couldn't access on consoles, so they've not. It's, it's yeah, it's, I don't, it's still there as far as I know, uh, and that's that's the kind of the different situation is. Yeah. Anyway, 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 putting a pin in that article. Um, mm, do you know what? I'm going to pick up the pace. I'm going to give you headlines now for the next two articles, and then we'll finish up with Free Game Friday because we're we're, we're over time. We're over time. Mm -hmm. So let's put a pin in that one as we jump into the next news. Any Halo players? Uh, well, good news. Good news. Sticking with Hello. Xbox. Halo. Uh, so, uh, Tom Warren at Bird says Halo Infinite. Can we get can, can we get another Halo? Because I enjoyed that. Do it again, babe. Hello. There we go. Uh, Tom Warren at The Verge says, Halo Infinite's better battle uh, pass progression is now live. You won't be stuck on level one of the battle pass forever, which is kind of how battle passes are supposed to work, I suppose. So if, you, <laughs> if you're still stuck on level one of the Halo Infinite battle pass, fear not, as 343 Industries promised to change progression. Uh, promised? Promised? I'm assuming that should be promises. Uh, promises to change progression are now live. The existing Halo Infinite battle pass makes it difficult to level up as you're limited to completing daily or weekly challenges instead of earning XP for every game you you play uh while that isn't changing yet 343 industries has added play one game challenges which will help you make sure you constant uh, consistently progress through the battle pass by playing matches the way you want according to halo community manager john junshek uh i'm going with that that's that's how it's pronounced even if that's not how it's pronounced Un <laughs> john on his, his name says unishek john you uh, know john, uh, john, john uh to address th there's there's one for your uh, battle pass get a name wrong uh not in the battle pass you scoop bingo i should have said that that uh, they've put together Get, <laughs> pronounce the name wrong we've done it already um so three three four three industries will also be removing some weekly challenges and fixing bugs with others but these changes do have a small price quote when we make this update we'll need to reset your challenges including your progress towards e uh, weekly ones explains john john uh to make up for this reset we'll be granting this week's uh <laughs> that's, 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 sorry john uh so yeah. to, to make up for this reset we'll be granting this week's ultimate reward the sigil mark uh, seven visor to everyone who logs in from november 23rd to november 30th uh, xp boosts will now uh double in duration lasting for an hour instead of 30 minutes which will help for longer big team battle games uh just just skip it forward criticism you know, yeah yeah, I just wanted to read this bit there. Uh, criticism around the Halo Infinite Battle Pass progression has been getting increasingly louder across the community of Halo fans this week after the surprise early release of Infinite multi uh, Multiplayer on Monday. While multiplayer previews over the summer felt like an exciting return to form, we had concerns around the Battle Pass progression and XP systems. 343 Industries still went ahead with the same systems, despite concerns from many during technical previews it's encouraging to see quick changes though uh, this opening halo infinite season will last until may which is double the three months that had originally been promised that extra time could be why 343 industries kept the slow battle pass progression in the first place but we'll have to check me out uh, check out the changes in practice to see if they make a big difference and as we can see in the update the changes as of yesterday are now live so Halo Infinite has got Battle Pass improvements. Have you played any Halo Infinite yet, babe? Are you you have actually I have. thoughts? I have. Yes, I absolutely love this game. It feels very much uh, the, the biggest compliment that I can give it is it's very Halo. Um and I assume the people who play a lot of Halo will understand what I mean. It felt like the multiplayer over the last couple has been hit and miss. Um, but this, it feels smooth, man. Like I, I genuinely, I think this might be the first game that I actually install when my new X, um, when my new Xbox Series S arrives in a couple of weeks' time. It's it's very, 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 very good. Um, I can understand where people are coming from with the Battle Pass stuff. Like, not, but you should always get XP for playing a game, regardless of. Uh, when I say game, I mean playing through like one match. We'll call it a match for the sake of this, rather than a game. You should always get XP for completing a match. The fact that you didn't with this was a little bit of a bummer. Like you'd have to go through and ch just you'd just be completing challenges just to be able to tick through your battle pass stuff. You should always get XP for completing the game. How many kills that you had? Did you have a positive KD and stuff like that? Just small things. Time spent just alive. Basically, you, other stuff like that. Yeah, just encourage you to keep on going. Um, that the challenges stuff is fun, and I love completing challenges. As the Fortnite one battle pass is the perfect example of it. The amount of punch cards that they have for you to be able to go through, like this one, you might not necessarily want to be able to win the match. You just want to go through and fish uh, and get five fish. Do you know what I mean? 
Um, it just gives you something to be able to jump into the match for because you're not going to be able to win every single one of them. So having having stuff like this to be able to put through just gives everybody the opportunity just to be able to play at their own pace rather than just completing challenges to be able to go through the battle pass and unlock the stuff that they want. Big change. Um, I'm, I'm very interested to see how many people are going to be kicking off. The challenges are going to be reset. They are getting something in return. Um, but still... Yeah, I think this is, it's nice that they're doing this now rather than later on and leave it a month. They've li obviously listened to what people are saying and reacting as fast as they can to get it sorted out. Uh, I just had a discussion now to the screen saying major FPS games getting big patches. And the reason I say major FPS games rather than just Halo is that, yes, it's just a change to the battle pass. Um, but it's not the only game to get changes. Before I jump into what other game is getting a change, um, Timeless says, been playing Halo a lot, very, very good. Don't care about the battle pass at the moment. Gamers are never happy. Given a free game early, yet still moan. Um, but he agrees yeah. that the battle pass was broken. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, it was. Um, and it was a bit meh that they've put it out. But you can never, you, we can never judge that. It's always a shame to see people give feedback and then it to not be listened to and then rolled out um, and then fixed. But at least they fixed it. It's, it's a shame to see them yeah. not doing that. I mean, there's all sorts of things that could have been there. We don't know. It could have been a case of they couldn't touch it. They couldn't change it until now or whatever. But they've changed it nonetheless. So, so GG's to that. So if you are playing Halo and you are looking for things to grind to, you, a lot of people are probably going to have that nice honeymoon period where they're just playing the game. They enjoy playing the game. They're not bothered about the battle pass. And then eventually the battle pass might become something more significant. Like PUBG. I didn't care about the battle pass. It was always about the enjoyment, the game, the plays, the wins. And then it became, okay, I've had so many wins, I don't really care about the win as long as I get a good game leading up to the win. And then it was, okay, okay I want some stuff to tick off whilst I'm doing that, the battle pass. Either way, they've made a change. Um, there will be a little bit of teething issues while they get that stuff embedded. After that point in time, people will just, just continue and it just works better. Nice. Also working better could be Battlefield. As uh, Oh, nice. You love it, you love it. Ishrak Suban. He's done to it. <laughs> Doosh, swoosh. Uh, Ishrak Suban at Eurogame has the next article. Battlefield 2042 gets day one patch to fix critical issues. Two, uh, 2042 patches, more to go. A little bit of 2042, nice. So DICE has announced the day one patch for Battlefield 2042 ahead of its re uh, release tomorrow, which is today, obviously. Although this will come as little surprise to early access players who've been playing the game since... Uh, since day minus six. Uh, while those who've been, uh, who have played Battlefield 2042 early have reported a more stable experience than the open beta, the game is still mired with bugs and glitches. Update 0.2.1 implements server-side upgrades which aim to reduce instances of rubber banding, often experienced in the latter part uh, of uh, around in all-out warfare modes. The update also reduces instances of stuttering while playing on the new map breakaway. Other changes include adjusting the animations of, uh, of flak during the end of round sequence to ensure she is displayed correctly uh, and you can really uh, read a full list of changes here linked in the article but a notable omission is any fundamental changes to gameplay which players have been asking for one such complaint is the issue of bloom and bullet uh, registration in general where guns don't hit exactly where you aim this has long been a feature of battlefield titles when firing at a long distance although it appears to be too aggressive in battlefield 2042 in its current state call of duty vanguard players have also found this an unwelcome feature dice does acknowledge that more changes are needed and has scheduled two further updates in the next 30 days the third time's a charm right says the article mm -hmm. so uh it's not just halo it's not just halo battlefield is getting patches too um a bit more in terms of boots on the ground stuff maybe not enough boots on the ground stuff not in this latest patch um the one that's coming out today obviously alongside the launch but do we live in a world where people expect FPS games to be fully 100% on day one anyway? Uh, that's a, this is always an interesting article because some people go, how about just have a game working on day one? I've paid for it anyway, which I get, which I get. Uh, interesting. I was just getting re uh, ready for us to raid official insert coin uh, <laughs> and they've just raided us. Yeah. Uh, shout Good out style. to uh, official insert coin for dropping the follow. You may, you may, if you, if you look hard enough, be able to see some insert coin pieces uh, scattered around the stream. That's all I'm saying. You may be able to see them. Those, those that know, those that know, then I appreciate you because they're not even available for sale anymore. But, but you know, yeah, so yeah, nice, nice. If you are from insert coin, by the way. ICU 21, get yourself 20% off sale. So I'm saying, just all I'm saying. 
So I'm saying. Mm. Now we are part of the, uh, the the Insert Coin Coin Army. We do stream on Insert Coin, and we actually streamed on Wednesday. Not Wednesday gone. Wednesday before. We played some uh, Call of Duty Vanguard on the official Insert Coin channel. So yeah, nice. Appreciate you people that have followed the raid over. Thirteen of you beautiful people. Thank you very much for dropping in. Siunia, uh, is that how we pronounce it? I hope it is. Thank you very much for the mm. for, for the musical fire in the chat. Uh, and Rich Biscuit Twenty One. He. Hey, we've got some Twitch lit and some Twitch things in motion. Love to see it. Anyway, we are talking about, uh, we're just about to wrap things up. This is the scoop. This is our daily video game podcast. We, um, uh, uh, Mr. Steve Convert, there he is. Hey, he's actually, he's actually Good appeared afternoon. on this podcast in the past, by the way. It's, it's been a while. Do you know, actually, you, you, you're overdue another stint on the, on the podcast, Mr. Team Corvette. Uh, we should, I think, I feel like we need Dan in on this show. Hey, hey. Uh, but yeah, you guys, welcome in, welcome in. We are not too far from finishing up, which is why we were just about to raid official insert coin. Uh, but we are talking about, um, patches to fps games so we've just announced that uh we've just gone through the story that um halo announced some changes to their battle pass we've just then followed that up with the story that battlefield 2042 gets a day one patch to fix some critical issues today uh anything you want to add on battlefield before we jump into the final stories babe uh no i think you pretty much covered it with that one again i'm just happy that things are starting to move into a different direction i've heard a lot of good things i've also heard a lot of things that might not be that beneficial to be playing it right away but again fixes are fixes if it makes the experience better then so be it uh that's, that's good that's good wrap up i'm absolutely typing away you can probably hear it in the background because we finish off on friday with a special segment do you remember what it is babe? do you know what it is uh, I think it's Graham. I think it's a segment that we like to call Free Game Friday. Yeah, hashtag Free Game Friday. You can see the discussing now. Nice. So we finish up the week by pulling um, usually free games, and if not free games, then at least discounted games. So if you guys are looking for something to play uh, that's different, that won't cost you any pennies, or will save you some pennies at least, then this is this this is hopefully going to be helpful to you guys. As Tom Ivan at VGC has the next article it says, next week's Epic Game Store freebie has been revealed. Uh, the tag says $15 worth of in-game currency for streaming service uh, anti, uh, and stream arcade. So next week, uh, next week's Epic Game Store freebie has been confirmed. The Ant Stream Epic Welcome Pack will be free from November the 25th until December the 2nd. That's the day before my birthday, just in case you didn't know. Offering players in-game currency for Ant Stream Arcade, a streaming service for over 1,000 retro games covering the likes of the Amiga, Commodore 64, ZX Spectrum, NES, SNES, Mega Drive, and Arcade. Normally priced at $15.49. Uh, the Ant Stream Pack will include 1,090 gems, which can be spent on playing games, challenges, and limited limited time tournaments gems can also be used to unlock harder challenges and play turn based pvp against friends and other players the Anstream pack will replace guild of dungeoneering never alone and kid amnesia exhibition exhibition which are currently free to download until november the 25th so do get your games that are free right now that's uh guild of dungeoneering never alone and kid amnesia you can get those right now and then as of next week you will be able to pick up um uh, and stream arcade nice 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 yeah does that tickle your fancy at all babe yeah i've never heard of it before Com- so it's definitely something that i've got to uh that i'm gonna add add to my add to my list anyway because why wouldn't you it's a free game but yeah i've never heard of this before so yeah i'll definitely be giving it a look and see what I, what the what the crack is with it i completely yeah, that's like usually like when we do free game friday because it's free games obviously you, you're not always gonna get um the last of us part two free every week because that yeah. would not be sustainable um but you can get some things that are a little bit left field that you think oh, yeah, I've, I've heard of that i've never played it sometimes you get some things that i've never heard of but ant stream arcade actually sounds pretty pretty interesting to me i have never heard of it at all so this is, this is there you go this is, this is the education Proud you with education as well as that this one isn't free games um but it's discounted games uh sony has detailed its playstation black friday sale uh this is from tom ivan at vgc discounts on a range of products go live on november the 19th that's today so sony interactive mm-hmm. entertainment has announced details of its playstation black friday sale the platform holder will be offering a range of digital software discounts via the playstation store as well as savings on physical products available through playstation direct and playstation gear the playstation store black friday promotion includes discounts on almost 400 PS5 and PS4 games, which we've listed in full below. We're not going to go through all of this because because that yeah. would be a long old show. Plus deals on PS Plus and PS Now memberships. It's running from Friday, November 19th at 12 a.m. local time, which has started until midnight on November the 29th at 23.59 local time. 
Um, but at the time of this being written, though, it, it obviously lists the games, but it doesn't give you the price. I have heard that the prices are now live for you to be able to go and have a look at. This is just a list of all the games which I have now dropped into the chat for anyone who wants to get some discounts on some games. Nice. Uh, any games in this mega list that, that catch your eye, Bib? Uh, <laughs> how long is a piece of string Graham uh, the likelihood is yes there is a lot of games in that list that look like they are going to be that, that I want to play am I going to play them probably not I've got too much on my plate as it is but obviously getting uh, back for blood on PS5 I've already got on, on my Xbox One I want to be able to play that on my PS5 uh, but then maybe maybe do I I've got my Xbox Series X arriving in a couple of days so probably not Deathloop I would ideally like to give this a go at some point I've never played it and I've I, it doesn't look like a Bibby game to a large degree, but yeah, I would probably like to be able to give it a go. Far Cry 6, absolutely, I want to give that one a go. I'd be inclined to start in Fallout 76 as well, because I do love uh, Fallout. I just not got around to playing that because of the shit show that happened. Um, I need to tell Luke that it's going to be in the sale uh, because of the discussion that we had yesterday. Uh, we just didn't know how much that was going to be. Immortals Phoenix Rising is another one that, should, uh, that I do want to be able to have a go at. It looked great. It's definitely... A Bibby game. Never really played a Kingdom Hearts game, so I'd like you can see where we're going with this. There's a lot on here that I would like. <laughs> I'll be here all day trying to have a go through this, but yeah, there's a lot on this list. I don't have the money to be able to buy them all, and I also don't have the time to be able to complete them all. So it could just be a lot of dipping in, dipping out. Um, next gen basis, Guardians of the Galaxy is in that Black Friday sale. Get on that, bang your game. I mean, that's where I stopped. I mean, I scrolled back up um, because there's a few things in there. Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, Marvel Spider Man, uh, and uh, Miles Morales <laughs> get involved. Obviously, there's Avengers and stuff in there too. There's, there's other things. There's the likes of Fevers and stuff. So if you if you are thinking of picking up some games, Black Friday sale could be a good way of doing it. Save yourself some money. Don't forget to uh, use your discounts. Do it. Do it. Nice. Uh, and Next Gen Base says yes, you should play Deathloop. Uh, do check out uh, Next Gen Base's review of Deathloop. Oh, they're on the uh, Next Gen Base YouTube channel too. Feel free. It's a good video by the way. Do check it out. Um, Rich Biscuit says it seems like most games are getting patches nowadays. Uh, it's 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 just state of modern gaming in that sort of sense. It's not a bad thing. It can be an, it can be frustrating, but it's not a bad thing. It, it's it, you just get continued service. Sometimes continued service people will mistake continued service with unfinished business. Um, it's, yeah, it's just modern life. It's modern life. We, ideally, you get a balance between the two. You get a game that's great and then improved, rather the game that's broken and then fixed. Um, but yeah, there you go. Uh, so that's it. That's it. Free Game Friday. The wrap-up is that there are a ton of games, 400, uh, I think or over 400, it said, uh, that I've got discounts on the PS4 and PS5 stores. Do go and check those out. The link to that article is in the chat. We'll give you the full list there. Or just check out it on your PlayStation, uh, PS4, PS5, or PlayStation Store online. Do check it out. Obviously, don't forget your free Epic Games. And we'll give you a reminder of the other articles that we went through today. If you guys came in late, WWE 2K22, there's a new trailer, and it shows off Rey Mysterio's 2K Showcase, My GM Mode, and more. It actually looks really good. This came out yesterday. We spent a good old mm -hmm. chunk of the show talking about that. It looks good. We then got a little bit more serious as we jumped back into the Activision allegations. Phil Spencer, the Xbox boss, uh, says that Xbox is evaluating evaluating their relationship with Activision, for, uh, Activision following the Bobby Kotick allegations. We then stuck with Xbox, jumped into the patch uh, segment of the show where we looked at Halo Infinite getting better Battle Pass progression in their latest patches. That is all now live, and Battlefield has a day one patch which went out today, which hopefully makes that game excellent for all the new players that play in day one today. Game over. End of the show. I appreciate everyone, Jenny. What were you smiling then? What were you smiling at? They just <laughs> have a look at the chat. What do you think I'm smiling at, Graham? Uh, you know how you can save even more money? Xbox Game Pass, where for a low monthly fee of only $10.99, you get access to hundreds of games, even day one releases like Halo, Forza Horizon 5, and Football Manager 22. You can even get the first three months for only one pound. Um, that is brand new information. <laughs> I mean, completely new, completely new information. Thank you very much, Phil Spe uh, Tito, Tito, not Phil Spencer. <laughs> uh, Tito25, our resident Xbox expert. Uh, well, when John's not here. Nice. <laughs> How did that roll off the tongue, but Xbox boss doesn't? Because uh, it was it was it was Xbox expert, right? whereas Xbox boss is is the 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 X not being in there. The X breaks it up. <laughs> Xbox box 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 box. 
punks. <laughs> nice, nice. But there, yeah, that's it. Thank you, thank you for joining us. Um, I did see all the way through the show that it did say ICU Studio on Bibby's side of the screen. Nobody mentioned it, which which I was waiting. I was waiting for someone to mention it. So if anyone's new here, I'm at home. Hi, Bibby's at home. Yeah, and we also have the ICU Studio. Sometimes we do dual streams where I'm at home and Bibby's in the studio, and it's mm. it, that bit over there where it says ICU Studio. We usually change that to Bibby's home. Nobody, nobody said it today. That's that's amazing. That's amazing. Ooh, you love to see it. Anyway, uh, we are going to disappear. There's going to be no extra streams from us today. We will though have streams tomorrow and Sunday. Do join us 10 a.m. ish tomorrow for some pub with G. I will be running out into the yeah. battlegrounds with with maybe friends, maybe on my own. I don't know. We'll, we'll we'll see how we go. We'll see how we go. So do join us tomorrow morning for some pub G. You can. If you want to enjoy a little bit of rimming, join Bibby on Sunday morning. Sky rimming, obviously. I don't know what you guys were thinking. Obviously, you just come from the insert coin stream, so you could be thinking anything. Uh, so, yeah, some sky rimming Sunday morning with Bibby. Before anyone does any rimming or goes to the pub with G, is there anything else that you'd like to add, Mr. Bibb? Yes, again, thank you very much to each and every one of you that have joined us for this week's episodes of The Scoop. There's been five for you. We now have a fresh week started next week where another five shows will be available to help shape. So if you want to help shape those shows, there's two ways you can do so. First of all, find us on social media. It is at Ice Cream Uploads across all major social media profiles. Or get involved with our Discord. If you're watching us in any of our on-demand services, go into the description below. All the links that you require will be listed there for you. But all we need from you is URL plus your false impressions. We can then give you our false impressions on the very next show, which will be at what time tomorrow? Mr. Graham Day. Um, like every day, we'll be going live at 10 a.m. Yes. Yes. 10 a.m. ish. Nice, nice. Okay, okay. Is anybody live? Does, is, uh, I'm kind of feeling like we maybe drop a little bit of a raid on Wonder Boy. Okay, a.k.a. Harry Channel. Some, ha some Halo action, is it? Yeah. Yeah, so you guys may or may not know who Wonderboy is. Wonderboy is an esports caster. He's a really, really good guy. Um, he's worked with us at a few events in the past, um, and he is playing Halo Infinite. He may or may not have his cam on screen. He hasn't had it in the last few times I've seen, but he is ridiculously good. So if you want to see someone playing some Halo Infinite to a much higher level than you will ever see us play on Ice Cream Uploads, then do stick around for the raid as we drop it in on Wonderboy. He would appreciate you guys going over. Obviously, everyone loves to have a raid drop in on their stream, so it will help make his day. Um, plus, you get extra channel points. If you stick around in our raid, you can see kind of down there, we have the sprinkles uh, section where you can do all sorts of things on our stream. If you stick around for long enough, you can even get a free sub to our channel. It takes a while, but it's, it's worth it. It's worth it. Uh, mm. So stick around for the raid as you'll get extra sprinkles to help towards all of that good stuff. Uh, but that is it for us from today. We're going to start the raid over to Wonderboy now, so make sure you stick around that. Make sure you have yourselves a good day. And what else did they make sure they got to do, babe? <gasps> You've got to stay frosty. <laughs>